What I'm missing about with simple radios like this, this is the Zigu G106, it reminds me of the time when I first started my adventure into ham radio. And this is really what this video is all about, but not about me, it's about you as a newcomer. So let's get the commercials out the way and talk about the adventure into DX. I've entitled this video The Adventure Begins because it's really aimed at ham radio beginners. I mean, in the UK, we've got the foundation license and you've got other um, basic uh, beginners licenses around the world. And I think it's worth looking at the opportunities you've got at the moment for worldwide communication with very simple equipment so hence the uh, the title <laughs> the adventure begins and i can remember my adventure in ham radio many many years ago back in 1960 and i was very excited to even be able to talk to other stations and i think as time goes on and as you you know you expand your station you you tend to forget that excitement but there really is excitement about your first few contacts. You're actually talking to other ham radio operators and you're, you're a bit nervous. I mean, you, you know, you're a beginner and you're frightened to say the wrong thing. And uh, sometimes you want to try and hide the fact that you're nervous. But in actual fact, we all go through that period to a greater or lesser extent. I mean, some people are just born confident. Other people's are, people are sort of shy. But... Uh, Anyway, let's look at the ham radio opportunity in 2023, which is not very far away as I shoot this video. I want to particularly focus on low-cost gear because if, as things are at the moment, we're all <laughs> struggling. You know, we've got heating bills and so forth, and as I shoot this video, Christmas is coming up, so there's all sorts of pressures on the finances. But you can get on the handbands with your new license very economically. Now, I, I saw something a few months ago where somebody was suggesting that, hand, that two meter handhelds or dual band handhelds wouldn't really get you very far. Well, that is partly true and partly false. Yes, if you have a handheld, then you're going to be limited to distances over sev several miles, three or four miles. If you're on top of a hill of course you've got an advantage but don't forget that you don't have to use the rubber duck or the flexible antenna that comes with that handheld you can connect that handheld to an external antenna you can have an antenna in the loft a dual band antenna covering 270 sems that will increase the range cover you cover quite dramatically and if you can get that antenna outside then so much the better. So you could buy yourself one of these fiberglass verticals, watts and a range of uh, fiberglass verticals, and so do diamond. And if you attach that antenna to your handheld, you'll get quite good range. You'll get a range of perhaps 20, 25, 30 miles. Depends on your situation. And of course, you can go into the local repeaters. You can also use that handheld in the car with a mobile whip. Again, you'll increase the range and you can motor out to the local hill and you'll have QSOs up to 20 or 30 miles and again through repeaters uh, even further. And of course, sometimes we've got what we call lift conditions where conditions improve. So for an ounce a lay of about 40 or 50 pounds, you can get on the VHF bands. And I did a, a video um, a couple of months ago now about a Midland handheld, which is I said it's an insane price, and it is an insane price. Um, I'll put a link to that video below here. But uh, that was quite an amazing little handheld. Less than, I think it was around about £40, something like that. Less than £50 anyway. And uh, you could get yourself a mobile whip to go on the car, if you've got a car and you're a driver. And you could go to the local hill and have some QSOs. 
And as I say, you could put a, an antenna in the attic. So even getting on VHF is very practical with a handheld. And of course, you can spend more money if you wish and have mobile um, gear and so forth. But we're talking at the moment about low cost. I'm sure many of you can think of other ways of uh, low cost operation on VHF. But what about HF? Now, HF has a fascination for many hams, newcomers and uh, experienced ones alike. And really and truly, that's how ham radio started. It started on the shortwave bands or the HF bands, low frequencies to start with. And when I first came licensed, I was operating on the 160 meter amateur band, 1.8 megahertz. Well, those bands are the bands that ham radio sort of started out on. And the good thing about that is that it does enable you to cover longer distances than you could on VHF because you're using the reflective layers in the sky. Well, at the moment, if you've just got a new license, you are well placed to enjoy some great HF communication at reasonable prices. Why is that? Well, we have something called a 11 year sunspot cycle means to say that in 11 years um, the sunspot cycle um, goes from very low sunspots to very high sunspots and back to low sunspots again and we, we don't think we're quite sure exactly um, the mythology of it but basically if you have a period of high sunspot then the HF band conditions are very good and not only are the conditions very good, but there are certain bands that predominantly are inactive when we are at a low sunspot level, but very active when we're at a high sunspot level. Well, we're just starting to climb up now. And for the next three, four, or even five years, we can look forward to some very good conditions on some of these bands that otherwise are very quiet. And... One of the most exciting bands is known as the 10 meter band, which extends from 28 megahertz to 29.7 megahertz. The good thing about that is that not only are conditions very good, but antennas are very small relative to some of the lower shortwave bands, and you can get some very attractively priced equipment. So you could, even with the smallest of garden, enjoy some worldwide communication on this band during the next three, four, five years with a pretty low outlay investment-wise. So let's take a look at that, because the 10 meter band, I think, is great for newly licensed ham radio operators that are working on a limited budget. First of all, you need a transceiver. Now, you may be fortunate enough you can afford a new transceiver, but there's plenty of second-hand HF transceivers on the market. And if, you've got a, if you're newly qualified and got um, uh, sort of a beginner's license, foundation license, we call them in U the UK, you've got a power limitation anyway. So you can probably find yourself a low-power transceiver. And in fact, I was recently sent a sample of an Elinco transceiver dedicated to the 10 meter band. It is, uh, covers uh, SSB, AM and FM and will give up to 25 watts output. And I will be doing a review of that um, transceiver uh, in, in the coming weeks. And uh, you'll just see it up on the screen now, uh, the, uh, the sample that I've got. But I, I haven't had a chance to uh, do anything with it other than just switch it on. You'll hear it station there that uh, uh, was on 10 meters. I should add that the 10 meter band is not always open. There are times when it's not, but most days it is open some way, shape or form. If you operate one of the digital modes like FT8, then you probably already know that you can get some amazing um, contacts uh, with very low power. But uh, even if you're operating SSB, you can get some pretty good amazing contacts and you'll find it very easy to uh, work stations in America when the band is open. So it's a good band to, uh, to uh, cut, your, cut your teeth on.
I'm going to take this opportunity of introducing you to another couple of low-cost HF transceivers which might just be the thing you're looking for. Now one of the all-time favourites in recent years as far as I'm concerned is the Zigu G90. I've got one here. This is the Zigu G90. It's a 20 watt HF transceiver. It covers 160 meters to 10 meters. It's got a full color display. It's got a built in antenna tuner. It's got a spectrum display for panoramic adaption showing you the uh, band across uh, about, uh, I think it's 50 kilohertz bandwidth. And you've got a built in VSWR display, graphic display. And it's altogether very, very nice. It's rugged. It's ideal for portable operation. And I think for the money, it's very difficult to beat. Now, if you wanted to cover all the bands, including 2 meters and 70 cents, then you go for something like the Yaesu FT818, which unfortunately is more expensive and doesn't have nearly so many facilities, such as the built-in ATU, such as a nice big color display, such as a panoramic display, etc., etc. So check out the Zigu G90, and I'll try and remember to put a link below this video. It's a real beauty.